Strategies. How do they handle this atmosphere? It's one of the top 20 teams in the country in terms of experience. They have had success in this building before a couple years back, the leaders on this team. But how do you manage it possession by possession? Because when they played six miles away in the Robin Center, Richmond did not handle the ball well. Neither did VCU, but VCU came out on top because of Vince Williams. He almost went triple-double. The young man was out of this world. 22 points, 10 rebounds, two assists shy. Hit the game-winning three to put him up by uh, three points. They go on to a two-point lead. How do they corral him, contain him at times, throw doubles at him off ball screens, make him see different looks? But again, the ball security for both these teams is critical. Over 20 turnovers in the first half combined. That's abnormal for Richmond. That is normal for VCU. They tend to overcome it. Ball security critical for both these teams and getting on the glass early, cleaning up your defensive boards. Richmond starting to pick up some steam here now at 17 and 9 on the season, 8 and 5 in the Atlantic 10. So challenging right now in the top half of this conference. Six teams we're looking at. You, you think of these names at Davidson and Dayton and St. Louis, St. Bonaventure, and then these two teams here tonight. This has been tough in the Atlantic 10 this year, and we are underway tonight from Richmond. On that note, Mike, both these teams, Richmond does not have an at-large resume. They need to be in the top four of the A-10. That's why these games are so critical for them. BCU could potentially play their way into an at-large resume. This is a massive game in the middle of February as March looms. Baldwin tried to float it down to Jalen Deloach, and it's taken away by Richmond. And the Spiders starting five. It's been this way all season. Gilliard with Burton, K.O., Gustafson, and Grant Golden. The experience is phenomenal from this group. Guy to watch here, Nathan K.O. They want to back him down. VCU plays four guards. K.O. more of a skilled postman. Gets a good look, just doesn't go there. Baldwin the other way, right in the traffic. That doesn't go. Offensive rebound. No good by Deloach, and Tyler Burton pulls it down for Richmond. Big rebound early. Burton's got to have a big day. What a no look pass by Gilliard. Grant Golden finishes. Gilliard, one of the best point guards in the country, leads the nation in steals on the precipice of passing the A-10 record for assists in a career. He's won one way there. One there. He only needs four to go to break that record. It's pretty impressive, no doubt. 749 when he gets his fifth assist. It's a new Atlanta 10 record. How special is Tyler Burton, been? number three for the Spiders? He's been outstanding. We saw him two weeks ago put up 37 in a win against St. Bonaventure. The problem is when he played VCU, he had the worst game of the season. Five points, one for 12. Don't want to see him force earlier, but he looked to be aggressive, but play within the game. That's a big miss by Curry, who's a, such a blur in transition. They've got five on four now if they can execute. Gustafson. Kale takes it in strong, and he scores it. Deloach has got to be more physical there. I mean, Kale can knock down that 10-footer. Step out and don't let him just walk into the lane and get two feet in the paint. Deloach, a freshman, playing for Hassan Ford. Ward, who we thought we'd see today, picked up a leg injury in their last win against Fordham the other night. Went at shoot-around. He was jogging around. He looked good at shoot-around. I'm surprised. Right. And Mike Rhodes thought he was going. So, surprised to see Ward out of the game. And that's what we were told earlier today. Here's a three-ball by Curry. That is good. They'll live with that, though. They went under the handoff. He shoots 28% of the season. If he makes that three, contested, you live and die with it. But this is the big key, handling the press. Not turning the ball over. Richmond, one of the best in the country. Top 10 in the nation in terms of their turnover rate. But when they played at Robin Center, it was not that way. Curry's coming off a 21-point effort in the win. And the last game is Burton Connects, a 66-61 win at Fordham. VCU's won four games in a row. And won seven of eight. Richmond's won seven of nine. But Chris Mooney told me, hey, we will look at times to post Burton because he's going to have a size and physicality advantage. He does over Curry. You saw him take advantage of it there. Get in the lane and we'll float it. Here's Stay Williams. Down. That's travel. And Chris Mooney told us earlier about how important it is at the beginning of these type of games. Right? It is in every game, of course. When you go in this rivalry matchup, right, you're on the road, tough place to play. It's the City Series. Mm -hmm. You've got to be in this thing because if you have to play from behind all day against VCU, you're in for a long time. 100%. And they, they, well, they're all wearing the shirts and the gold out, so some rivalries are forever. Like This this means a lot. And I think when you talk people around the Richmond program, yes, they don't like VCU, but you flip it, VCU hates Richmond. Right. So when they're in this right. building, it's a little bit of a different different element. But these guys have been here a lot. Been one of the most experienced teams in the country. Golden gets the foul there. Golden knows what that's like. 
He's been doing this for a long time now, his sixth year at Richmond. He said his favorite game against this group as Mike Rhodes is now in his fifth season at VCU. And just continues to keep this team steady, you know, challenging every single year at the top spot in the A-10. Golden said his favorite game against VCU was a couple years ago during the right before the pandemic hit. And they handled them pretty good, about 20 points. And that doesn't happen often in these matchups. So I thought it was interesting today too, yeah, in talking about this game and this rivalry, but just more broadly with this team, he says ACL is the is, is the acronym they're going by. Aggressive, confident, and loose. And that shoot around was fun, it was energetic, it did not feel like you have a huge rivalry game coming up in just a few hours, which which I like. When the lights are on, you gotta show up then too. Geez, do you ever want to use ACL as an analogy for I, I, good? I, I, he yeah. just did put a positive spin on one of the worst injuries you can get. <laughs> right. I do find it interesting. They've already subbed both their five men. Jalen Deloach came out, Levi Stockard, a, a transfer with a lot more experience in this game. And Matt Grace gives up a little bit of body and physicality. Comes in as Curry misses again. Matt Grace had a nice game a couple weeks back yeah. when we saw him in his home court. Uber skilled. Yep. Let's see how far Sakar made him catch that ball out. You want to make them initiate offense, especially through their five men. Off the elbow, off the free, off the box like he's doing now, and further out beyond the three-point line. Grace battles his way in. Matt Grace a little short. Stockard's got it. Baldwin, nice. Great ball fake. Froze his defender, able to get into the lane, and then use that rim as almost like a defender as he laid it up. Richmond early on have handled the press well, but it is a 40-minute exercise. It, it wears you down physically and mentally. And I've been there as a point guard sometimes. When you get that ball, you turn like, ah, here we go again. Missed three by Burton and rebounded by Baldwin. It's almost taken away by Gilliard. That's why he's the nation's leader in steals. And that's out of bounds off of VCU. Richmond ball win. But this team back. has had success here, this Richmond team. They've won one game. This group, this core group has been here for now five, some guys six years, five seasons playing. You see Nathan Ko and Golden both sitting on the bench now are have had success in this building. And both are very important in terms of how they go and attack this Richmond, this uh, VCU team. You've already seen it. They want to get the ball to post at times. And talking to Chris Mooney, when you play in this chaos that this Havoc, used to be branded Havoc, not the same anymore, but still chaotic. When you get that post touch, it almost is a calm in the storm because they don't trap the post. They don't dig a lot. They allow those bigs to kind of be one-on-one -on -one so you can settle in and have an opportunity to make a play. And they've done that. Now Gilliard just burying 15-foot jump, 18-foot jump shot. Jacob Gilliard at 11 points, six rebounds, five assists, and four steals in the last game for Richmond. They won off a 77-63 win. Good hustle by Ace to keep possession there. I thought that was a turnover for sure. Now in Stockard against Grace. Rebound Burton. Now they have missed some shots they make. And that's 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 one that Stockard's gonna make more than miss. You saw Curry miss a layup in transition early on, so they're not playing very well or shooting the ball very well, but they gotta stick with it. And this is where when you're an opponent you can get into your set, right? And yeah. the press wasn't on, you get into the half court. Mm -hmm. Get your thing going here. Gilliard again, it's blocked on the play by Baldwin, out of bounds to VCU. In the first matchup, Richmond shot 4 of 22 from the three-point line. That's not good. That's well below their, their season average. But part of the, because VCU closes out so quick, they've got such great athletes. You saw Ace Baldwin right there close out and get a block. I thought watching that first game, I've watched it three times now. They've got to play better off of closeouts like that. Shot fake, take it to the rim out for that. Shot fake, side dribble, knock down threes, because the VCU guys are leaving their feet. They're closing hard. They've got to play better out of those closeouts. You just kind of answered what I was going to ask about how the VCU does in their half-court defense. As we know about the pressure, how are they doing in their half-court? So. They're elite. They're top ten in the nation in defensive efficiency. I mean, they, they are an absolutely elite defensive team. Former Red Raider head coach Chris Beard, number 20, Texas. They're hosting Texas Tech. That's tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Red Raiders beat Texas by 13 back on February 1st. Texas 15-1 and one in home games this season. Big battle there in the Big 12. Coming your way tomorrow. You want to talk vitriol. When Beard had to go back and play oh, in Lubbock, yeah. that game, that scene was something else. People in Lubbock were furious that he left 
he built the thing into something really special. Right. He left to go to his, where he graduated from. It's not that shocking, his alma mater. Right. But they did not appreciate it. They let him know, and the, tech, the Red Raiders put it on Texas a little bit that game, especially the first half. Interesting to see if Beard gets the same love at home. I'm hearing Red Raiders fans are getting tickets, though. So I, it'd that. be very interesting to see that atmosphere. Whistle offensive foul on Nick Sherrod. And it goes the other way. So that's okay, though, when you're going to your alma mater, right? That's all we need that shot. I think so, man. You took him to a national championship game. Right. We see Sherrod here as Kern steps up. See, that's where I, I wish we could take this play. All of us in the seat, the analysts are all complaining about the same thing. There you see Kern stepped in as Sherrod's almost landing on the ground. Like, that shouldn't be a charge. we got to figure this thing out because block charge call, I know it's hard. But we got to clean it up for officials because that's not, that's not what the rule is supposed to be about right there. He's almost landing when he hit him. Again, that's being called in real speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I, this is a, we have a great staff. Lee Cassell, oh, yeah. great Bert Smith, and Ron Gruber. This is an A-level team. That's no, but I'm with you. It's tough. It really is. Marcus Sahonis scores it for VCU. And it's a three-point ball game. Seven minutes gone by here in the first half. And pressure. They almost forced the turnover on Crabtree. Instead, it's a foul. I'll tell you what. Crabtree's got to be careful. Watching their practice yesterday, that young man, and, and Chris Moody's taking him out. I think that's the right move. The Crabtree did not look like he was ready to handle this press. A number of turnovers, number of mental mistakes on the offensive end when they were playing. you got to be locked in, man. When you're playing this team, you have to be fully locked in, and he, he got away with one right there. Well, you're 100% right, and there's no offense to Crabtree, right? He plays about eight minutes a game, and he only played it five in the last game. He's missed some with an illness. This might not be the environment you want to just get thrown into right off the bat. It's tough. And you could see it yesterday in practice. It was wearing, he was, he was playing poorly, and it was affecting him mentally. That's hard. Now, KO, this is what they want. Again, that calm within the storm. Let him back down Williams. Nobody's coming. Can he finish? Couldn't there. But that's a good look. They'll take that all day. Williams for three in the tie. Went under that screen again. They're going to continue to do it. He's got to make them pay. If he does, like he did in the game winner, then that they'll, they'll live with that. But go under and test late who they're looking at. Well, so far it's VCU one for four from three-point range and Ooh. Richmond over two back pass there. Golden Curry intercepts. Williams thinking about it again, gets it back from Deloach. Now it's Curry. And it's stripped away by Gilliard, but right to Williams. Three ball, Sahonis. Sahonis was lights out shoot around today, as was VCU in general. Man. With it, now, granted, 5-0, it's like above the rim. That guy was out there playing nobody. He looks phenomenal. There's no ball and there's no defense. That helps, but they were knocking down shots even nobody defended them. Ooh. Williams comes in, rejects that shot, and Curry holds it up here for VCU. Now Baldwin. A spirited shoot around today for VCU. Great energy, great practice yesterday from Richmond too. They had a ton of great energy as well. And that's a great move by Ace there. Pull that up in front of Gold, not taking it too much trouble. Couldn't get their defense set because... Three ball Sherrod. And Richmond is scoreless over the last three minutes and 40 seconds here. They still have a one point lead, however. Good cut. Williams. From Sahonis, he's fouled, and he's going to shoot free throws when we come back. He's just a good player, man. Vince, just a, he's just a baller. He, he knows how to play the game. He can play without the ball. He can play with the ball. He makes key plays for you whenever yeah, you need it. Okay then all the media members were corrected. They, they sat corrected after that. Yes. The groan. Yeah, a lot of legends back in the house here tonight for VCU, including Maynard. Briante Weber was one of the greats yeah. uh, here as well. Steals uh, for VCU, Jaquan Lewis, really good point guard as well. They love this rivalry, man. This means something so much to everybody, everybody that's played in it, but obviously the city itself. It's the first lead for VCU tonight. Coming up at the halfway point of this first half here from the Siegel Center in Richmond, Virginia. Capital City Classic between these two here. Here's Gilliard for three, and the lead back, yes. Wow, what a shot. That was a good screen to set him up, and Curry also ran into the screen. He's got to be quicker and recognize that, and get back to Kurt Gilliard's body. He didn't do it, ran into the screen. Gilliard made him pay from NBA range. Oh, 
Baldwin dumps it in for Stockard. On a spin against Golden, he holds his ground and forces him into a traveling violation. And now you get Stockard coming back in. He, he's not really been the player he was early in the season. Had some illness issues, has not quite been the same. And you saw Jalen Deloach get the start, but Hassan Ward not being available this game is huge. And he had he's had a double-double three of the last four games. Gives him great activity in the defensive end. Offensively putbacks, can score at times, he's back to the basket. And again, they thought they were going to have him. And then he, he is not able to go with the leg injury that he suffered in that win against Fordham. Another key, offensive rebounds. You know, the Spiders destroyed them in the first game on the offensive glass, which kept them in the game. Uh, for a team that was shooting so poorly, you just can't have that happen. They 10 offensive rebounds, almost 20 second chance points. That was K.O. on the putback. Talked about with Ward. He played only seven minutes in that last game for VCU. And hopefully they'll have his services back soon. Ness, Nessine on the floating runner is Sahonis. And Golden has it yet again. Nice transition here by Richmond to get it up the floor quickly. Gilliard is just so aware. I thought he got hit right there. Golden was stepping up and almost going to pick off that pass. He had a great throw ahead. That allow them to push the force the issue couldn't make it then curry he is a blur in transition if you don't get him squared up he is getting to the rim and he's got to see multiple bodies because if he sees any alley any lane he's going to take it he crosses over burton look at the good that's a smart play by stockard just almost like a like a guard just just running into golden just keep moving and golden can't address the ball until he gets too late to foul you see golden complaining looking for the call you're not going to get that Golden heads out, he gets called for the personal, and now Curry, who heads the free throw line here for VCU, and they now lead, or now trail it by just one, 15 to 14. Golden's got two now with nine minutes two, to go, which, is, which, is, which is really important, too, because yep. he offers just something different. We know Grace is a good, skilled player, as Grace is going to come up here, but the physicality of this game is a little bit different. He's doing a good job of denying Burton the ball. He's not really getting any touches. Goes to sent. Gilliard for three, another good look. Went inside out. That was created by Sahonis, who has the ball now, getting beat off the bounce. He's a good shooter, but defensively, he to be a liability at times. Great job. Another great cut by Williams off the ball. And Burton just lost sight of him. Lost sight of him. He lost sight of him in a second. Gets by him. Gilliard's a press breaker by himself. That's what's good to about having him. And now they turn it over, and here's Williams again. Seems to be involved in every play, doesn't he? He absolutely is, man. He is he is a key cog to the squad. Great pass. Good, good recovery by Grace. I obviously didn't think he was going to get there. I was going to credit him with a great pass, but Grace read it well and got those long arms down there. Wasn't that the point of emphasis by both teams here as this pass intercepted a foul is called on the deflections, getting yep. hands into the passing lane. Both coaches emphasizing that today. And, and you see for VCU, that's how they generate so many of their turnovers. They get they want 40 deflections tonight. They're active hands. They did a great job of turning over uh, Richmond in the first game, as we already mentioned. Uh, and, 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 but you look at Richmond, that's not how they run their offense. 14.4%, top 10 in the nation in terms of turnover rate. So that's a percentage of your possessions that ended the turnover. So VCU versus their opponent to turn it over one of the four possessions. That is amazing. Obviously, Richmond's really good at not doing it. Now, who wins that battle today, and can they take care of the ball? Great ball fake by Grace. Has been key. They've been okay. Grace was on. fouled on the floor, so no basket. He's going to go to the line for two. Yeah, I thought this was a good basket. The foul comes over. That's what they called it there, not when he went up, so they didn't give me. There's no continuation in the league. Problem was, Vince Williams got called for the foul, not Stockard. That's Williams' second. Ace Baldwin also has two. I... Uh, Incorrectly said that Grant, Grant Golden had two fouls. He has one foul. So good news for Richmond in the foul front. Bad news for VCU in the foul front. Good point. Richmond started 0 for 3 from three-point range in this game. They've hit two of their last three. VCU made their first three. They're 0 for 4 since. Good scouting on the inbound play. Anytime Burton's in the inbound play, un, OB under in the corner, that's a that's a that's a screen for a lob. They read it well, they executed it, did not let him catch that out of a timeout. Gustafson. And he can't get it to go. Grace tips it, and VCU is going to have it. That should have been a layup. Oh, man. Sahonis has to force the issue there. He's got to let them run their wings. He's got to make a defender commit. He gave it up too early. I know you want to get the ball in Vince Williams' hands. Right. Always. But maybe for a layup as opposed to for too early. Deloach works his way in. Tough turnaround shot. Rebound Burton.
Here's Grace again. Burton pulls up and hits. That's a great play off of a off the closeout, but this is not good. You see Curry down. He's Sean Curry. Grabbing his left knee. He's done a great job. He's been following Burton all over the court today, working hard. And that was again where you had a closeout situation. We said you got to play well out of the closeouts. He gives him with a head fake. Got him to leave his feet. And obviously when he came down, there was a problem. Let's take a look at what happened here. Good inside out. He's helping hard into Grace. Mm. Well, that's what, yeah. just an awkward twist. Well, I think Burton maybe got a piece of him. He, I don't know, you're right. Mm -hmm. Just kind of twisted. Trying to stay with Burton, Keyshawn Curry. But you saw a little bit of adjustment, too. You hope this young man is okay. They were digging on the strong side. They hadn't been doing that. They were allowing the bigs to just dribble and kind of go to work. So he digs on the strong side to get it kicked out, but that creates the closeout situation. Curry with the towel over his head. And... That's too bad. Yeah, it is. Young man's big part of their team has been playing really well as of late, too. Gets over 10 points a game, and you saw, again, he's guarding Burton, their most explosive offensive player, a Burton, a potential NBA player. And now Curry can't even put pressure on as he leaves. Jeez. So Nick Hearn is in, 24 for VCU here. And Curry heading to the locker room with the ovation from the fans in the far corner. And we'll try to get an update for you at half time of what his status is going to be like. But that does not look good, unfortunately. Seven minutes to play in this first half. Richmond leads by four. I do like the Richmond threw on the press, though, as soon as he went out. It's an opportunity. Your team's a little mentally out of it. You see a teammate go down like that. They tried to press him. He ain't got a defensive stop. Hilliard. Hale here now. Gustafson for three. Good luck. Offensive rebound, Burton. You talked about it being a key here, and Richmond's got a few second chance opportunities in the offensive end. It's a tough assignment for Curry, the freshman, and Grace has got to be careful forcing that issue baseline. They're going to go back and press again. Got no ace ball one of the game. He's got two fouls. Take a look at Grace here. He is good operating on the baseline. Now, there's a lot of hand contact there. A lot of times you put that hand on, that's going to be called. And look, look at the VCU players right now talking. They, they look a little confused here. They went over this shoot around. What to do against this press when the ball's where? But you got Kearns, a freshman there. Sohonis transfer some experience. None as a freshman, 23. Yeah, interesting lineup on the court right yeah. for that. A young group here, besides Williams, who has it now for Kern, true freshman. Works his way past Kale. How about that? Big finish. Now, can they turn up that defensive pressure? Because the, this press has not really caused much effect as far as turnovers right now, which is fine. But again, it's a cumulative effect of mentally and physically over 40 minutes. It's better to handle well. That's way off. Grace Smith fires on the three. Kearns got it. Now here's Williams. Hounded at the top here by K.O. who just takes it away. Gilliard, what a pass to Burton. Oh. Usually I say this on talkback for TV term, so only the producer can hear that. Hold that play! <laughs> Let's run that back. That goes to that saying. Wow. Seems like he has one of those a night, right? Just unbelievable passes. And it's to the perfect guy. It's to Burton that can, that can raise up and tomahawk it down and silence his crowd that was coming to life. Good job by Deloach. Oh, offensive rebound and a putback. There was a pass last Friday night in our Atlantic 10 Friday night mm -hmm. showcase at St. Louis that Yuri Collins had, yeah. and he put spin on on a fast break. A little bit of English. Yeah. <laughs>
They say never produce on the air. I'm just yelling stuff. I want to see this on the air. Great job by Ko again. He's been good on both ends of the floor. The, it's the awareness of Gilliard. Right away, he knew exactly where he was and how he had to deliver it. It's like a throw-in in soccer. It's over his head with two hands. He throws it, fires it into the ground. I mean, it's pinpoint perfect with awareness when you didn't need to, never need to look up. That's why he's going to lead the A-10 in the history of this conference and assist shortly. Two assists right now. He gets three more. He'll have the record. Missed three ball there by Burton. Nipitucko here, two-point ball game. Hearn again. Nope. Just fell off the bottom of his hand. He needed to get that off his finger pads and get it elevated off the backboard. Grant Golden's back in. Aguilar. Tough play there. Blocked by Jaden Nunn, but he has it back. Fight for it. Tie up and a jump, and it's going to stay with Richmond as Williams is down there with Burton to tie it up. And we'll be back right, after this. Somebody clip off Zubin saying that. I've never heard we're going to go through the Friday night in the Ivy League on ESPN. <laughs> but, hey, Ivy League, this is why we need to play Friday, Saturday games. Because outside the A-10 and a couple other conferences playing a couple games, you get a little love. You get a promo, and we're going to go through the highlights. Exactly. Here's Golden coming back for Richmond. As they now lead it 24 to 20 as we come up on three and a half to play in the first half. Mike Corey, Dallin Cuff with you tonight from the Seagull Center in Richmond, Virginia. And this has been a hard fought game, and you could expect this before a good entry pass to Stockard. Couldn't finish it though. Man, VCU's missed a number of layups. Point blank shots. And, and the weird thing is, I actually think Richmond's playing better in this game. And they've, they've done with all the things they've wanted to do. They haven't turned it over much. They've been able to play through the post and score. Great back cut. Oh, wow. Did part of this offense with the Princeton system that Chris Mooney employs, the former Princeton player. But it's very much a sped up version of that, but the floor spacing and how they cut. But they're only, you know, PC's only not six. And they have not played well. Ace Baldwin spent most of the game, most of the half on the bench with fouls. Exactly. Keyshawn Curry had to go back to the locker room as he got hurt. So I, I'm with you. They're right in it. What a pass, though, from Golden. He's done that throughout his entire career to Gustafson. It's a six-point lead. Jumper on the way is off by none. Stays with VCU. Largest lead of the game tonight. That's something where VCU could try to make some hay if they could get some offensive boards. Neither is team, neither teams are good defensive rebounding teams. Get yourselves some extra possessions, extra opportunities by getting to the rim. Because as Malcolm said in the studio, they've not shot the ball well from three. They have in league play. They're up to 40%. They just don't take many shots, and that's a bad entry pass by none. That's the sixth turnover of this first half for VCU. Sherrod for three. Burton skies for the offensive rebound. And he's going to be fouled. They're calling on none. This is a critical last 2.15, Mike. I mean, you're in a six-point game. Burton just skies in for the offensive board here after a turnover. It can go one or two. If, if you can get this thing to 10 points or so, you are feeling great if you're Richmond. And you're BCU, if you can make a spurt to tie this thing or get it close. But you can't, if you're, that, if you're this young team in gold, getting Ace Baldwin back on the floor is critical these last 215. You can't let this thing get to double digits here at home. Well, that's what Coach Moody talked about here. Coming out with intensity, playing from ahead, which Richmond is doing right now. They have the possession, as you said. Crucial two minutes to go. Let's see what happens. Here's Burton trying to work by Kern, and that's solid, but doesn't go. Golden there for clean up the miss. Two offensive rebounds on back to back possessions. Timeout, VCU. It's an eight point lead. 28 20, Richmond leads here at VCU across town. Rivalry six miles apart, these two schools here in Richmond, Virginia tonight. And our Friday night Atlantic 10 showcase game on ESPN. We've got Richmond 8 and 5 in the standings right now in sixth position in the Atlantic 10. It's a team that was picked to finish second in the conference before the year started. And now they're starting to pick up some steam. And all it takes, you know, right, is putting back to back games together. You win a big one here on the road potentially. And yeah. you know, right back in. I mean, they've been playing really well since the turn of the new year. They've won 7 and 9, Richmond has. And DCU's won 7 and 8. 
So both these teams are playing well. It's the, it's the non-conference that hurt Richmond and some of the bad losses they took. And not having this guy ace ball when he's hit the shot was critical for VCU. They took UConn to the very brink. They battled Baylor hard. But without Ace, they weren't their full complement of players. Now they have him out there. He's a difference maker. Him having two fouls in this, diff this, this game has made a huge difference early, too. Gilliard for Gustafson. Right back over to Cole. It is wide open for three. And it's out to Nutt. Jaden Nunn gets Burton up in the air. He recovers. Somehow it's an offensive board by Kern. And he takes it in, and a foul. I'll tell you what, when you need to, when you have your opportunity as a freshman, you got to squeeze that thing with two hands. And, and that, that's what Kern has done. He's made some mistakes early on here, but he's played well. He's been aggressive. He just, he just rolled his way to the ball, fights his way out of three guys. This is like a pickup game, Mike. Yeah. Just dribbles out, took it back. He's up the three-point line, took it back, and he goes right down the lane. Gets the end one with Keyshawn Curry out with a knee injury. He has stepped up right now, making some plays in the offensive end. Got to stay locked in the defensive end as well. Caps off a three-point play. The foul was on KO for Richmond, his first. Pretty clean in terms of the fouls for each team in this first half. No one in the bonus yet. Burton's got to be careful. He tried to take Kern before 1v1 and ended up in a jump ball. What's that? That's going to be offensive. Yep. yep. And that's KO got two fouls in the first half of the first meeting between these two teams, just like that. And Vince made a bit of a meal of that. But he did he did initiate the contact. Let's take a look. Yeah, he sold it, but he did. It's a better angle. And it's a little bit of the arm that's extension too. Off. You're gonna call it. It's exactly. just but you he's gotta know that that's what they're doing there, and he's gotta be a little bit smarter in that regard. BCU. Working with 32 seconds to play in this first half. 12 second differential, shot clock, game clock. Not scoring the Richmond bench here, seven nothing. Williams with a three ball. It's good, we're tied at 28. Ace hits a jumper. Kern wills his way to get an offensive rebound. He hits the three, this place is live right now. They cannot turn this over. Get one good shot to end this half. Grace for three, got a good look, no good. Rebound VCU, Williams, two seconds left. This is good if it goes here by none. And that is the end of the first half. What a way to finish. Those guys will have more time on the floor, again, both with two fouls. If you're Chris Mooney, right now you try to attack some matchups. If you can try to go at Ace Baldwin or at Vince Williams, maybe even to pick up an early foul would be really critical, but you can't force it because VCU is so good defensively with such good hands. You don't want to start doing too much to cause turnovers. You want to play within yourself, but at times look to take advantage of things. And this is a huge part of this game. Deshaun Curry goes down with a knee injury. He will not return per VCU. This young man is a blur in transition. He had a good start to this game. He did a great job on Tyler Burton, the leading scorer for, uh, the, for the Spiders. Now he's not coming back. Nick Kern, the freshman, stepped in, gave good minutes, but can he sustain it? Can he defend at that level? Burton, again, is an elite player, an NBA level player. Yeah, just horrible to see that. They're going to be around him for the rest of the game, and who knows for how long. But for right now, here tonight, we're tied at 28. And VCU gets it inside to Deloach on the pass from Baldwin. Three point play opportunity. Now, now Deloach is going to get the credit for this the dunk and the finish. But really is Ace Baldwin. Coming off the ball screen, Gustafson gets caught up on it. Golden has to hedge out there, and there's no tag from the weak side. They talked about this in shoot around. KO's got to be tighter. As that ball goes away from him, KO's got to try to slide in. Now it's hard though, because they lifted that, that offensive player, so he could throw it back. But really, with VCU, you want to dare them to shoot threes versus catch and get dunks. And that's the third foul on Nathan KO mm -hmm. for Richmond. He has to head out in the first 19 seconds of this second half. As we mentioned, he's played here four times, over 12 points a game. He's been really good. He's impactful in this game as well in terms of how they like to run their offense. He's got four points. He's got a couple boards, but now he's on the bench. What a turnaround here. I remember you saying just a little while ago that you felt like Richmond was kind of controlling this game a little bit. I mean, or at least had some of the momentum. And really, it's been two minutes, and now all of a sudden, VCU's got the lead by two. It's a 10 nothing run. That was the thing. I thought Richmond was doing exactly what they wanted to do, and they only led by six. And VCU, I thought, was playing poorly, not really making some shots they normally make inside the key. You know, weren't really causing turnovers. 
Kern's got to be careful there. I like this too, this isolation kind of screen up high and make Kern, again, the freshman, deal with, with Burton. Because he's got two now as well. That's a very tough cover. Kern, the true freshman. Tyler Burton, the junior. Third year with the program for the Richmond Spiders. Number three, he's got two more years left too as well. Coping and all that. And a year back, Gilliard. Golden. Just one on one with Deloach trying to get the two back. Can't do it. Rebound Deloach. And here comes VCU quickly. Williams for three. Wow. Golden, I think that was intended for Burton in the far corner, and he intercepted it. It was, and it's unfortunate because that was creating a long closeout for Kern. I think Burton might be able to take the shot or maybe even beat him off the bounce for that closeout situation. Golden again, and he's fouled as Williams came down for the help D. Let's see who they call it on. It's going to be called on to Lush. And I like the fact they're trying to play through Golden again. There's calm in the chaos. They don't dig down. It's 1v1. He came late. Tough call. Looked like it was clean unless you get a better angle on the lower part of the body. Yeah, he got yeah, they left left back on him. Yeah. Him too. Lee yeah. Cassell, the, the baseline official actually didn't call it. I think it was Ron Groover, the outside official, because you can really see that left arm on his back. Yeah. That's where the foul called, and that's easy to call. And that's how great of a job this crew does here as well, too, as you said. Lee Cassell, Ron Groover, Bert Smith help each other out. Whoever's in best position to make the calls, and they've been all over it here tonight. If this goes in, I would like to see Richmond get back to the press. They don't, they drop off. Because you may be able to turn them open and speed up VCU a little bit. Because right now, VCU's in a rhythm offensively, and you don't want that. Yeah, I'm with Momentum completely mm -hmm. shifted over to VCU. They were on a 13-0 run. You are going to do something to try to change that up. Floating shot is no good. Gilliard comes away with it after Baldwin misses. Burton. Short on the take, and it's all the way out to Williams on the run. He's got none. He's fouled Pat the basket. He landed hard. Gilliard, great sportsmanship. Went right over to make sure he's okay to help him up. And he is all right. And the unfortunate thing here, Burton, that's a shot Burton makes eight out of ten times. He doesn't get going the other way, two on one. He just kind of went down awkwardly. Smart play by Williams. Good bounce pass on the two on one. And Gilliard... I'm not one to provide you know, input to Gilead as far as making steals. He's the all-time leader in the history of Division I basketball. But if you're not going to get that rock, you can't let him get the M1. Yeah, I think he was trying to hold him up so he didn't get the shot off, yeah. but it was a, wasn't a great foul. And now it's all of a sudden, it's a seven-point lead here for VCU. It's a 17-1 to run as Burton comes back to get that too. That is dating back to the minute 42 mark in the end of the first half in which VCU went on this run. That was a great catch and quick pass and cut. It was a great classic give and go. And again, this way this offense runs such fluidity and good skilled players, that's not abnormal to see, but they needed that. Foul up top. This was out of a press break too, which I almost was really a turnover. And if, honestly, if, that's, if it's Curry in the game, not Kern, I think Curry is a turnover. Kern didn't, uh, a nun, excuse me, didn't commit to it. Allowed him to get in the front court. Good catch and good cut by Burton and delivery by Golden. And Burton doesn't even again try to do too much, but when he had Kern that one time, he went just to the last possession. He went 1v1, missed a little five-footer. He needs to continue to try to do that, but not off the bounce so much. as He's better off the catch than off the closeout. No one picks up Williams. Just too easy. He beat Burton, and then again, there was no help anyway. Now it's when it becomes tough to play here, right? When the crowd's all over you, it's a seven-point lead. VCU has momentum. I think you still want to try to play through Golden. And again, if Burton has a closeout situation, is that great? That's great. But Burton on the block. You see Golden on the block is still effective. Oh, here comes Curry. What is this? Wow. And from the SID from VCU, he did text us a few minutes ago. It says Curry's back. Didn't know. He got, they thought he was out. They told us at halftime he was out. But like Willis Reed out of the locker room, here comes Curry. Yeah. And they'll post him right away. Go right at him. And they gave a lot of help there. Jeez. 
too much help, and Baldwin's going to get the foul, but he didn't need to get there. What a great sign for VCU. Jeez, I'm, he almost slips again. I'm just so happy. No, that's, that's the replay of the injury. I'm just so happy that he's actually fine. Like, I, I, I'm shocked that he's back on the court, given how his leg moved, but he's out here. Yeah. And they're going to try to test him. Watch the up screen coming at him on the back screen right now and see if Burton tries to beat him. There it is by Gustafson. More of a decoy. Well, he's moving pretty darn well here. As Golden gets inside against the basket. Could see him wince there. Actually, I was watching him. He, he took off real well, but as he crossed half court, We'll keep watching him, but just having him out there was really big. Nine. It's inside for Stocker, working against Golden, trying to hold his ground. Look at that. Levi Stocker scores it. VCU's got to be totally energized now. You got Curry back in the lineup. They've got a seven point lead. Crowd's on their side. Right. That's a huge three. The footwork, first of all. We caught it, tight rope walking the sideline. Reverse pivot to create some space. Jab step, got his defender to move, and buried a triple. That was textbook. You can't underestimate the experience of what Sherrod brings to this group coming off the bench. A guy that has been normally a starter for his entire career, sixth year. VCU responds here as they lead it by six once again. VCU is too easy to get in the paint right now. They've gotten the paint off the bounce or past the stock guard the last couple possessions. Just too easy. That was none, and now here's Burton who will be fouled on his way to the hole. And it will take us to a timeout. It's not a month. It's part of just American history. It should be woven into every, every, every month, every day, because it's part of our history of the country. And having these stories always being available, always being told, always being highlighted of any month of the year is very important. And Charles McLeod, one of those many that should be recognized and is being. There's a look at Keyshawn Curry for VCU. And his return to the lineup uh, just unbelievable after that. What looked like a devastating knee injury in mm -hmm. the first half, being helped off the floor, putting no pressure on the left leg. And he has returned and... Moving pretty darn good here now as yeah. he flares out to the corner of the top of your screen. He's got it. Richmond defensively has had a problem in the second half. That's a good deflection right there. So Sonis just faster yeah. to the ball. But again, VCU would be able to get the ball into the paint. Sonis for three! And this has been their, their issue hasn't been shot making so much in league play. They're shooting 40% of the three point line. Their effective field goal percentage is middle of the pack. It's been the turnovers where they're bottom 20 in the nation in turnover rate. We already showed you that. They turned it over on 26% of their possessions. Today, they only got six turnovers. So they're, they're in a really good spot if they just start making shots, which is what they're doing in the second half, what they didn't do in the first. That's a great look by Grace. You need that if you're Gilliard and the Spiders right now. Richmond has led this game by as many as eight. Now it's a VCU eight-point lead, their largest of the night. They've made five straight. Sohonis taking a game for three. Left wide open. He did the old, he did the old wipe his hands on his shorts yeah. thing. Yeah, it was, the, the ball was wet all of a sudden. <laughs> There's Grace. Burton. Hitting in midair and he's fouled. They call us a shooting foul. That's it. I thought he was pulling up to shoot it. Wow. That'll be Williams' third and Ace Baldwin has three. Remember, that affected them in the first half and why wouldn't it? It's their two best creators, their two best players. As we take another look, I mean, that's a, that's a shooting foul. I think. I think he's going up into his motion and hit the left arm. And when you're struggling to score, you want to get yourself to the line. Although Burton just missed a free throw, it doesn't matter. What? Yeah, Burton there, too. Jeez. Williams is out. Kel Brown Jones is in. Here's Burton. Oh, he thought about the three now. Gilliard, another try at it. That's off. I'm going to say it again. Bur they're closing so fast on Burton. Play off the closeout. Sh shot fake and then go by Curry.
none. Got it. Six minutes gone by in this second half. Ten point VCU lead now. Brace for three. And Richmond just has been cold here in this second half. Three point shooting now, three of 16 from the field. And Sahonis is out of bounds in the basin. Let's see what this does to the lineup here now, Dell. You got KO coming back in, Golden coming back in. This is your original starting five here for Richmond. They need to play their game, but part of their game plan was to try to get the ball in the block to KO at times to see if he can operate. Same thing for Golden. I think you try to play through that, and within that, there will be opportunities to kick and skip across to create some closeout situations, maybe some open looks, which Richmond has not hit, especially in the second half. KO. Curry's all over Burton. So is Baldwin on Gill here. Five to shoot. Golden for three. Had to elevate that over the outstretched arms of Deloach. It was short. Richmond's at their best when the ball is moving, popping, passing, cutting, side to side. That possession, once everybody caught it, dribbled it first. It didn't really move. It was stagnant. They, they have to get a rhythm and a flow to their offense. You credit VCU for taking them out of it, but they have to get that back, and they're really struggling to score. Well, they're not hitting the outside shots. They missed mm -hmm. 10 of the last 11 from three-point range, but I agree with you. The ball needs to move a little bit more on that offensive end. Let's see if they can do better when they get it back here. Here's Curry. Shot clock for them at four. Hits the deck hard again. It's going to go the other way. And again, that sportsmanship and billiard for Richmond helping him up. That was a terrific job of, of KO switching out, but then not following. He's in a mismatch situation. Look at his body guarding the ball. He's going to go straight up, arms both straight up. He's allowed to do that. Doesn't yep. doesn't create any contact because he's on three fouls. Very smart play to make Curry kind of finish over. Loach called for his second personal foul. VCU. Give Kayla a touch. There you go. Yep. From the high post. Oh, what a cut by Gustafson. And he fouled him for the easy two. And that's the Princeton basketball. Operating out of the high cut, out of, out of, the, out of the elbow. You see where he got the ball caught, too. A lot of their bigs have been able to catch it on the elbow. That's who you want to be. They've had to catch it out by the three-point line because VCU's pushed him out there. It's an eight-point game. Baldwin, Burton, tap it, KO's got it. Five on four for the time being, and Loach is down on the other end for VCU. Burton, oh, he's crushed. So Cal Brown-Jones lands on him, and it takes us to a timeout. Again, no, How about here tonight in the Atlantic 10? VCU and Richmond battle for the city of Richmond here, and any one of these six teams, look out come conference tournament time. It's one of the most open tournaments in the country in the A-10. It's going to be outstanding, and there's so much on the line because really there aren't many at-large bids that are going to be taken by this league. You know, Dayton has an opportunity with their schedule coming up. Bonaventure's turned things around with two wins over St. Louis. They might be able to do it. Davidson is the, you know, the uh, because they're leader right now, they're going to get the, the auto bid, if you will, but that's not guaranteed. They have it, the resume to get in on their own and the wins to back it up. So it, to guarantee your spot, you got to do it in D.C. And the key part here is to be in that top four. So you have to win three games in three days as opposed to four games in four days. So these six teams are really battling to get in that top four is so critical. That's why this game will be so much to Richmond, but obviously also to VCU. Yeah, they're right behind Davidson, who's won 20 of their last 22. They had a 15-game winning streak earlier in the season. Dayton has won six of the last eight. St. Bonaventure is starting to catch some fire now with back-to-back -back wins over St. Louis. Mm -hmm. The preseason number one team in the league coming in. Cal Brown Jones got it. Nice speed from Stocker. Not not something you always see from VCU. A big to big post interior passing. Stocker great passing. But uh, Mikael Jones Brown with the with the great cut. Brown Jones, excuse me. Here's Golden now for KO. Playing with those three personal fouls. Powers his way in as he go. 
Did a great job of not charging, getting both feet in the paint. Give me one shot fake just to gather yourself. Maybe you get into maybe the foul line. He, he rushed that shot once he got there. Again, this is Baldwin driving in this time for VCU. It's back to a 10-point lead. Again, getting getting feet in the paint. Their shots in and around the basket. They missed some of those in the first half. They've gotten there too easy. What a pass. Golden's too strong, though, on the runner. They did something with that basket. Because yeah. VCU missed a lot of layups in the first half. Richmond's doing the same yeah. thing in the second. Something going on down at this end. VCU's led by Williams in this game with 12 points. He's going to come back into the next whistle. He's at the scorer's table right now. Halfway through the second half, Baldwin for three. Got a great look and he trades it. They're in complete control of this game. And I'm not going to say in the first half it seemed inevitable, but they weren't playing well, and they were only down a couple. It seemed like they were going to find a way to turn around. Maybe I didn't expect this onslaught, but it's been impressive. No doubt, almost at their entire point production in the first half here, just halfway through the second half, as they lead it by 13, largest lead of the night. They've been on a 35 to 13 run since 142 remaining in the first half and nine different players have scored for VCU led by Williams with 12 and Baldwin with 11. Three-point shooting hasn't helped Richmond here as Burton and a redirect as the defense has been outstanding for VCU. They're now three of 18 from three-point range tonight. More of what it was when they played in Richmond with 422. And some of those were look, looks were open, but a lot of them were late closeouts and hard closeouts contested by VCU. Oh. Seriously. Williams. 16 point lead. Williams does so much, almost takes yep. that one away from KO. There's going to be a foul. And Williams is just a great player, man. He just knows how to play the game, and you give him a little bit of space. He's not hes not great in terms of pace and athleticism. He's not blazing speed. He uses his body so well. He's fundamentally sound. He's got a great intelligence, I already mentioned. It's just he's the complete package. He's a ball. He, he, he just makes plays for himself and his teammates. But he does have four now. And so he goes out. I think this VCU team, they've won 7 8, as we mentioned. They may win 8 of 9 here, but they're not really on Joe Lenardi's bubble yet. You've got to just win. you got to win. you got to win out here. You're not win out, but you got to keep winning games to get back on that bubble and to do some work in the A 10. Because it's hard for me to believe that this team is not an NCAA tournament team right. if, they, if, they, if they don't win the A 10 tournament. When you look at other teams in other leagues, they at least have quad one wins. You know who doesn't? North Carolina. They're only 7. Wow. They have not won it, and they took a quad four loss this week. And you look at Virginia Tech's playing better in this in this state. They don't have a quad one win. Like, there are other teams in bigger leagues that resumes don't stack up to some in the A-10, but they don't have as many opportunities. And some guys said, you missed Ace Baldwin for the beginning part of the season. That is huge. When you had some of your quad one opportunities, you had great showing, just didn't win those games. Yeah, I was going to say, whatever happens to recognize it, who you had, when you had them, when you beat them, all that kind of stuff. That still exists. That's not gone. These people don't worry about that right now. They're worried about routing their rival, which they're on the precipice of doing. Mikel Brown Jones scores it for VCU. It's a 17 point lead. And they have completely turned this thing around. They went down 28 to 20 with under two minutes to go in the first half. And look at it now. And as we mentioned, it's not always the turnovers, it's the physical and mental toll of all this pressure. Nothing has come easy for Richmond. Gustafson got it knocked out. And Richmond is only going to have two seconds to work with on the shot clock. This year they were ninth in the nation. That's their highest ranking since 2018. Awesome event and a great game coming away on Sunday. Mike Rhodes' group here with VCU as they get the ball inside the KO for Richmond and he scores. They only have two seconds on the shot clock. And at this point in time, I think you got to start looking to, to press VCU just because you, you don't have that much time. VCU, as we've mentioned before, has turned the ball over a lot this season. 26% of their possessions. It's bottom 10 in the nation. But they only have seven turnovers today. 
and Nick Sherrod was there just a bit late. They worked on this a lot yesterday. That man that's guarding Kern in the opposite corner has to get over there and be there to help on the roll man on that high pick and roll. And he was just a little late in allowing him to catch that pass. The whole reason to be there is to kind of bump the cutter. See, as, as he rolls down there, Kern, uh, Sherrod's got to be there earlier, meet him higher up, make them throw that skip pass over the top to Kern. And then it's a long closeout, but you prefer that. All right, how about the uh, tournament resume here for BC? What do you see? Well, I see them, I mean, obviously, they're 2-2 two two in their quad one games, 4-4 uh, four and four in quad two, and then you look at their 11-1 and one in quad three and four. So they've gotten, they have only taken really one bad loss, but they haven't had that many opportunities. You see where their net is, their strength of schedule. The key thing is they only have one quad one opportunity left on the road at St. Louis. But you keep winning games while other bubble teams are losing. That helps you move up, just regardless. Just stack wins is important. Well, as Ace takes, a, takes his cookies right there. But the problem is, compared to other leagues, when they go to the A-10 tournament, they're not going to get any quad one games. Nobody is, because you have to be above 50 on a neutral court. So as of now, the highest teams are Dayton and St. Louis. In the, they've been flirting in the 50s for the last couple weeks. You've got to just stack wins together, and it's going to be hard to build a resume at this point in time. That said, when you look at this VCU team now, there's no doubt they're an NCAA tournament team. When you look at it in the preseason, even without Ace Baldwin, when they battled Baylor and UConn, they still look like a team that could get there. They have gotten there, and with this young man fully healthy, they are. They missed Baldwin for seven games this season, and, you know, you and I were talking about this beforehand. I mean, he tore his Achilles at the end of May last year, and he made it back in December. I mean, that is unheard of. I mean, talk about the ace effect, right? What this guy's done. I mean, it's, it's obvious. Look, it's evident. Look what he does in terms of team's points per game. It's up over 10 a game, and that's where they struggled with scoring and manufacturing offense in the non-conference season. Some of their opponents at times are better, but they're missing their lead guard. And then on the defensive end, he is, again, the straw that serves the drink. He kind of sets the tempo a lot of time for them defensively. You saw what he can do on the ball. If he's played enough games, he'd be third in the nation in steals with just under three a game. But he hasn't played enough games because of injury. So he adds so much to this team. And there he goes again. Just comes right in and takes it away from Kaya. And the crowd rising to their feet here at the single center. Cal Brown Jones sticks with it. That was a heck of a look, too, by the way. <laughs> Great pass delivered initially, missed the initial shot, so Ace doesn't get an assist, but he should. Here's Kale. 20 point lead for VCU. He's fouled by Mikel Brown Jones. Talk about the ace effect. I mean, it's just, it's it's evident as you see KO get the ball in the block and then just comes down and just takes it. Just comes right in, second straight possession. The steal. Then how about that? Just whips it right in front of Golden's face. I don't know if Brown Jones even thought he could, that was coming to it. What an onslaught it's been here for the Rams in this final two minutes of the first half, really, in this entire second half, that's for sure. Stocker goes out, and there's Deloach, who's back in. He got the start tonight. The true freshman first career start. As Kale converts, he's got nine points for Richmond, but they are down by 18 points here. And no hurry offensively, that's for sure. Ball to another outstanding pass. He finds Deloach. I feel like it's something that Richmond does to teams uh, with the passing that we've seen from VCU tonight. Gustafson trains a three for the Spiders. I should think for, for Richmond to be the team they want to be, uh oh. This is who needs to give the rim a look more often. He's a good defender, but he needs to look and be willing, a willing score on that end. The Golden and the Spiders, you gotta have that ball right yeah. there. I mean, now they could use up another 30 seconds, really, because it was a change of possession. Mm -hmm. Ball playing. <laughs> Unreal tonight. 
Gilliard for three. I know I'm a broken record, but shot fake and one dribble to your right, it's a wide open three. Or shot fake, go ahead, get in the lane. But they're closing out so hard on those three-point attempts. Let's see more from, from Ace doing his thing. KO has his right hand down, no ball pressure. Cuts right in front of Golden's face. And then, what are those, are those the assist goggles? Are those what those are? <laughs> yeah, I see you. And then, whoop, doing a little of that, flipping it up and in. He's got 15 points, five dimes to go with him. Some great shots, some camera work by our crew here tonight. I thank our good friends Sean Connolly, Jim Porter, Noel Rigney, Rusty Wilson. Love coming here to Richmond. And great job, guys, here tonight. Sean Connolly always gives us our Liverpool updates. That's right. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an Arsenal guy, but I mean, he bleeds yes. the red, to say the least. <laughs> Foul on the floor here. Gustafson for Richmond is second. One on one situation now for VCU. This team is deep. I mean, nine players have scored here tonight. Yeah. They get contributions from everybody. I mean, their, their bench has been good. They've got 14 plus bench points now. Make it 19, excuse me. Been great. You'll be in the studio tomorrow, Dallin. We've got a huge day of college basketball. How about some of these matchups coming your way, starting with Duke and Florida State at 6 o'clock? Florida State's banged up, a lot of injuries, but we'll see if Leonard Hamilton's team can bring it on the road at Duke. KU going on the road to WVU, West Virginia. Tad Sherman makes shots, tough shots more than anybody in the country. Can he do that and lead Jay Ox with upset? And then game day game, Oregon on the road at Arizona. Oregon suffering a bad loss at Arizona State last night. Folks, if you haven't seen the Wildcats play, Tune in. Stay up. Drink some coffee. Maybe put a little Bailey's in there to spice things up. I don't know. But you, you got to stay up and watch Arizona. Because this is a team that can cut down the nets. And I don't think people pay enough attention to them. Just because people aren't awake on the East Coast in the Central Time Zone late night. But the Wildcats, and if you like a few shekels, you can still get them at 14-1 to 1 to win the whole thing. So that's a solid that's futures a, that's, play. That's a good number. That's a phenomenal number. Yeah. Who do you like? You know, when you want to, I mean, there's so many good teams really, I feel like, in college basketball this year. And I don't know everybody thinks that there's so many that can potentially win it. It's really kind of, this is a conversation I've had with Chris Vitola over the years. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a very short list. What do you think about that? This year, that list is longer than most. Okay. There are a lot of good teams. There are no, there aren't great teams right now, which is different the last couple of years. We had great teams in Baylor and Gonzaga separate themselves. Baylor and Gonzaga the last two seasons. Um, but when you look at this year, we've got a lot of very, very good teams that are vying to become great. And I think we've got about eight or nine that could win the whole thing. That said, there's probably 17 or 20 that could get to a Final Four because, again, winning four games in four, you know, four and four is a weird situation. Weird things happen. Um, and it almost seems like every year we get somebody there you probably didn't expect. So I think it looks like this kind of year yet again. It'll be really fun in March. But definitely eight or nine teams that could win the whole thing in the world. Mikhail Brown-Jones and VCU continuing. Their dominance here in this game tonight, 72 to 49. Just think about the defense, too, they, how hard they've made it for Richmond to score. Richmond had 26 points with two minutes to go. They're now at 49. They scored 23 points in over, over 20 minutes of play. It's just, and everything's been that. It's been an absolute battle. They're a top 10 team in the country in defense for a reason, and you've seen it on display here. Well. Here tonight, and Miss Muffet doesn't live here, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This has been... I'm shocked at how well this game has turned out, to yes. be very honest with you. I, I, I thought it was a really tall order for Richmond to win this game. I think the VCU styles make fights, and their style really make, it can They can impose their will on teams, and they've done this. But I didn't think it would be this to this degree. Um, Richmond's not shot the ball well, but more importantly, Richmond has not defended well in the second half. And they've not been able to keep BCU out of lane or keep BCU off of doing what they want to do. This place has been rocking again here tonight. The Siegel Center in Richmond, Virginia. It's been a 53 to 21 run for VCU going back to that 142 mark of the first half. And Richmond's missed 12 of the last 14 from three point range. VCU has made five of the last eight. Coach Chris Mooney and company are going to have to regroup after this one. Still a lot of basketball left to be played here, and especially this Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament, which is going to be outstanding. 
Which one's going to have to go to George Washington. Then he has St. Louis and Dayton at home, and then at St. Bonaventure. So yeah. that's going to be a tough schedule, a tough stretch to finish off the regular season. Huge, and as we mentioned, they've got to be in the top four. You know, just where you want to be. And right now they're on the outside looking in, and they're not going to get this win here. I have to admit, Corey, I mean, it's a 23-point game. The Miss Moffat reference went way over my head, just entirely over my head. I had to ask our producer, what does that mean? I was a little slow. I'm a little slow. What did you get? I missed the, the, the spider reference. Right. Miss Moffat sat on the top of eating her curds. That, that whole thing? Yeah, yeah. I just, just at the first, I was like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> well, what's happening here? What's happening is that he's used on a tear in this contest. And again, the poor shooting continues for Richmond. It's out of bounds to the Rams. BCU, after this game, has George Mason at home. And they go to UMass, home against St. Bonaventure and at St. Louis. So, again, tough games on the slate, so to come. But they have to stack wins. Again, those first three games aren't helping their resume that you just rattled off, but they have to win. Then when you play, you know, you play at St. Louis, that's going to be something. You play Bonnie's, that's, that's, that's something. That's a big deal. The logs to the free throw line here for VCU. And, you know, as heated as this rivalry is between these two schools, sometimes it's more than just basketball. There was a devastating fire this past week at William Fox Elementary School here in Richmond. So both athletic departments, or VCU and Richmond, they're coming together and they're collecting supplies for students, teachers, and staff. And they're doing it before this game, during, and after. And then it's going to continue for the next two weeks. Fans can drop off supplies in the lobby of the Siegel Center here at VCU and over at the Robbins Center, ticket office over across town at Richmond as well. And it's a great job by these two universities to come together for that. You know, usually it's it's a divided thing, right, against yeah. each other, but now coming together in a nice way. That's good to see. A hundred percent. That's why I said earlier, like, we need more hate and vitriol in college sports. When it's between the 94 feet and in this building to create the atmosphere, it's the fun, it's competition, you're rooting on your team. Fan is short for Fanatic for a reason. My Twitter timeline will show you that. It doesn't make sense, but that's part of it. But, but outside this building, we got enough hate and vitriol, so it's great to see these two programs, these two universities doing something so great for their community. And a long-time athletic director, Ed McLaughlin here at PCU, John Hart at Richmond. Nice job at both universities to help out. A lot happening in this game here tonight, right? Curry went mm -hmm. down with that knee injury, didn't think he was going to return. He comes back in a, you know, that Willis Sweet slash Larry Bird enter Marv Albert in a liner, you know, in fashion, comes back onto the court. And if plays. you're going to do it, give me I'm the voice. Gonna do it. I'm not if gonna, you're going to do it, no. do it in Marv's voice. <laughs> what are we doing here? It's a 20 point game. And here comes Keyshawn Curry. Thank you. All right. Yes. <laughs> And I'm terrible at it. That was amazing. I think you should do the next 226 in that voice. No. I'll lay out and completely. I don't need to talk. I'm done. <laughs> I did grow up watching Marv, though. It's my all-time favorite for sure. Here's a three ball. That's good by Gustafson. He's got to look to score earlier in the game. He's got, he can be a factor. He's an, he's an efficient player. He's a skilled player, but he's got to look to do it. All right, now I'm done. Marv it up. Oh, it's all good. What do you think Richmond goes from here, right? You come off this game like this tonight. Right, I know it's it's a rivalry game. They wanted to play better. It didn't happen. Talk talk Richmond Spiders here for a second for me. You, you, you let this one go. As you, you watch the film, learn what we did right wrong, and then you move right on. You, you got it. You have to. You have no other choice but to move on. They got to go on the road to GW, and St. Louis is coming to town. There'll be a game on ESPN2 next week. I know you'll be calling that game. Mm -hmm. They have to stack wins, too. They got to get in that top four. So you can learn from this, but you can't let it linger. They, have, they still won 7 of 10. After this loss, you got to just continue to push forward and understand what needs to improve because this was not good enough, especially in the defensive end. And it continues here as none got to the hole, rebound by Grace. You know, and, and you alluded to this, and I don't know if VCU is getting enough credit. Hopefully, they'll get a little bit more after games like this. I hope so, man. I think they're they are a tournament team. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And again, when I come back to their resume, they're two and two in quad one. North Carolina's 0 and seven. Jay Tech's 0-5. I can give you more. Wake Forest is 1-4. and 4. 
But there's a number of teams that are in from bigger leagues right now when you look at different prognostications that are in as at-large teams that don't have a resume that VCU has. And yes, they have a couple, you know, they have a quad four loss, but that outside of that, they've done a good job of beating who they're supposed to beat and then showing up against to big-time teams. And again, without Ace Baldwin for the first seven, that has to be factored in. And when they're factored in, they're whole, they're a different team. 21-point game, and DC is going to empty the bench here. Great job by our crew tonight. Our producer, Josh Carswell, our director, Ben Johnston, Haley Lamarca, Rob Thompson, Jenny Warren, our entire crew in Bristol and on site here in Richmond. Thank you so much. Becky Solomon with us here on site. Spencer Douglas, our statistician, thank you. You're Dallin Cuff on my court. <laughs> That's what to say. I was like, and Dallin and Mike, yeah. we're signing off a minute early. We still got 59 seconds to go. Just yeah, it's good. You're giving the props to everybody that deserves it, as rightfully so. Production here tonight on this one. And boom. Oh, he's fouled hard as he tried to go in. And you don't need to be getting hurt at the end of this game. A 22-point game and 50 seconds left. But he almost put himself on Sports Center. That's what he almost did right there, because that would have been bananas if he catches that and has a reverse dunk on Kern. Like, that would have been something. Mm. Burton's a special player, and he's, you know, he responded a little bit better here tonight. I mean, he was in the 1 for 12 in the first game. Yeah. But, you know, tonight, 12 points, 4 of 9 from the field. Then hit a three-pointer. He has 11 rebounds, though, too. Another double-double uh, for him, which is impressive. He played hard. He, play, he played his. He played hard. He was tough. He made plays. But again, it really wasn't so much their offense. Their offense made, it hurt their defense at times. But you can't expect to beat VCU on their court when in the second half they shot over 60 percent for most of the second half. That's yeah. not really going to get it done. Yeah. And they didn't offensive rebound the way they did in the first game. They didn't get turnovers the way they did in the first game. So you credit the Rams for playing, but playing much better. And Vince Williams and Ace Baldwin, when they needed them to make plays when the issue was still in doubt, they made plays to help them separate. And all these role players played big time roles. Sahonis. Arnold Henderson is inside as a whistle before that. Shot clock violation. I'll tell you what, those guys in the studio right now are hoping the next two minutes are covered by us. And they can go sight to sight. <laughs> That, that shot clock violation will help. I think Bert Smith's talking to the, talking to the scores table right now yeah. might help too. How about our slate of games tomorrow? It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. I'll be in studio starting at noon on ESPN. I believe that's the, the ranked matchup we'll have right away. And then Texas, Texas Tech on ABC, 1230. Another great day of hoops. Well, VCU. Dominates this one. They sweep the series in the regular season, two nothing over Richmond, and they win it by 20. 77 to 57, the final score here tonight. That's all for us.